mercy. Mawadda means reciprocal love and mercy. We made within your nature a love and within her nature a love and we expect both these loves to come in tandem to bring the beloved with each other. Hence you notice in many of the stories of the ulama, especially those in Qom and Najaf, anyone who studied under any of them, they will tell you stories about how those girls who they not necessarily or they did not necessarily know before marriage turned out the best of mothers when they married them. They didn't have a relationship before, they didn't know who they were. They just took it on the basis of akhlaq and they took it on the basis of their deen. They had the best of relationships. Highlighting Imam al Sadiq's famous hadith where he says, Don't marry the girl you love, love the girl you marry. And on this idea you found, for example, Ayatollah al Majlisi. May Allah bless his soul. Ayatollah al Majlisi, with all the books that he has bought for us and all the students that he has taught, he narrates the story about his son in law, Ayatollah Mazandarani, who was one of his sons in laws he narrates a story about him. What does he say? He says, Ayatollah Mazandarani was one of my students. He says, what I used to do is whenever he was in my class, I see him as one of the best students. He says, one day what I did, I came up to him, I knew that he wasn't married. So I came to him, I said to him, I would like you, I would like to give a suggestion to you. On my behalf, would you like to marry my daughter? My eldest daughter, would you like to marry her or no? He said, well, you know, if she's your daughter, you know, Ayatollah Majlis's daughter, what an honor do you want other than that? He said, if she's your daughter, I wouldn't mind. Let me meet her, okay, the short meeting that takes place, and then the first real time that he sees her is when he sees her on the wedding night. He sees her on the wedding night. The next morning, he is leaving, he says, Ayatollah Mazandarani says, I'm leaving to go towards the Hausa. As I'm leaving, there's a fifth mas'al of fiqh right in front of me, which I don't know how to answer. So he says, I'm looking at this mess and I'm thinking, how do I answer this? He says, my wife came towards me and what she did, she came and she said, don't worry about it. Give it to me. And she took it. She wrote something down for him. And it turned out that she knew the answer to this mess. Ayatollah Majlis, he says, I went to see Ayatollah Mazandarani that day. I couldn't find him. Where's he gone? Where's Ayatollah Mazandarani? He says, I went and I found him in the mosque institute. I'm wondering, you know, if my daughter's that bad, you don't need to go to the institute, you know. Tell me, what's the problem? First day, sujood. Second day, sujood. Third day, sujood. Until on the third day, I told my majesty, says, I came to him and I said to him, is there something wrong with my daughter? He says, no. He says, I just cannot understand how great this Lord is. That he shows me another one of his wonders. That because I was willing to give love for myself with the right near, he rewarded me with a lady who not only is willing to give love back to me, but in the mas'ala of fiqh that I thought no one else knew but me being one of the top scholars, she leaves me the answer on the first day after our wedding. He says, what type of Lord has engineered such great love between two human beings? That's why any relationship for it to be successful, both sides need to number one, have the same principles. Number two, the same axis. What I mean is that many people come and say, Ammar, you know, this person from the Iraqi community of some Lebanese brother, he can't marry an Iraqi girl, for example. Why? Because the Iraqis, they have different culture and the Lebanese has a different culture. For example, the Lebanese, he likes this kibbaniya, he enjoys eating this. Don't know how anyone can. And you find, for example, and you find, for example, the Iraqi, he, he, he eats certain things which you can't even name from the mimbar because of the way they look. You found here that here is a clash of cultures. However, a clash of culture. If you want the person to eat that, they'll eat it. If you want the other person to eat something else, they'll eat it. Clash of culture can be removed. It's only when there's a clash of principles that love won't be two-sided. Not a clash of culture. When you see a relationship falling, it's not because of culture. It's because of the principles above the culture. If on one hand, there is one side of the family who says, every gathering we have, everyone, male and female, has to be in the gathering. But there are some members of the family who don't wear hijab. How can we all sit together in the same room? You know, however much I'm going to try and tell you, yes, I'm going to be strong and you're my wife. If your cousin's sitting there wearing the tightest thing, do you think it's not going to affect? Do you think it's not going to affect? No, this is a realistic matter. Because here it's not clash of culture. Above here is clash of principle. Because the principle above here would say, I as a follower of Al-Muhammad cannot sit in such gatherings. Culture aside, religion overtakes. 
The problem is, because there's no principle of Al Muhammad, you find then culture becomes the problem. If the principles are there, they can be overridden. Once you have principles in a relationship, you will find that the love becomes two-sided. Why? Because both of us agree on who we have to follow, that means both of us will take our love towards that higher following. That's how it works. Here in the case of marriage, number one, Allah uses the word mawadda. Number two, Allah uses the mawadda where? When speaking about Al Muhammad. I do not ask you for anything except what? Did it say hope? No, it says mawadda. Mawadda tafil qurba means what with Al Muhammad? I don't ask you for anything except reciprocal love for Al Muhammad. They came, they sacrificed. Hussein ibn Ali beheaded. Akbar mutilated. Qasim, body parts all over the ground. Abu Fadl, hands given away everywhere. You found each one of them. Ali Azhar and arrows through. This was Al Muhammad's love shown towards us, the Shia who come 1,400 years later. It was the love to tell us that were it not for Hussein ibn Ali rising against that Khalifa, then none of us would be here today sitting honoring their greatness. The fact that they showed us love when Allah, when Rasulullah says, I don't ask you for nothing except mawadda for them, means I do not ask you for nothing except you returning that love. That's it. All I want from you is a return, a reciprocity that I want to return my love towards Al Muhammad. That's why Imam Al Sadiq once, in an incident which I'm sure many of you have come across, Imam Al Sadiq once, a person comes to him, he says, Imam, why don't we fight the Abbasids? Because the Abbasids were the rulers in the time of Imam al-Sadiq. He says, why don't we fight the Abbasids? What does the reply come? The reply comes by Imam al-Sadiq, go and sit in the oven. Which oven? That oven there. Sit in the oven. What do you mean sit in the oven? I've come, I have soldiers, I'm willing to fight with you. He says, I am your Imam, go and sit in the oven. He says, I can't. Harun Mekki was walking past. Imam al-Sadiq looked at him, he said, Harun, go and sit in the oven. Harun Mekki walks towards, you know those bread ovens that you have? He walks towards one of them, opens it, sits inside. The person's looking at Imam al-Sadiq, what's going on? This person's just gone inside, he's probably died now. Imam al-Sadiq says, Harun Mekki, come out. Harun Mekki, he comes out straight away of the oven. The man's looking, he's thinking, the man just walked into an oven, and now all of a sudden he comes out without nothing happening to him. At this moment, Imam al-Sadiq said, look at what just happened. You've come to me and you've said that you have an army, and you have soldiers, and you're willing to give everything away behind me. All I asked you was to sit in an oven. You then negated it. You said, no, I will not. Harun Mekki did not know if the oven was lit or not. I knew that the oven wasn't lit. But Harun Mekki didn't know. All he knew was when Imam al-Sadiq says, sit in an oven, I sit in an oven. That is my return to his love. He says, Harun Mekki, the reason I would accept him as a companion of Al-Muhammad is because his love towards Al-Muhammad is unconditional love. Not conditional on the basis that yes, I accept the salah and the psalm, this is nice, and I accept the hajj, that looks alright as well. But this area, Muhammad got it very wrong in that area. That is what? That is love which is God's conditions. Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari commented on this with Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. When Jabir once came to him from the mosque of Kufa, he said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, I have just seen a dream which has made me very scared. What is it? This dream is a very long one, inshallah, one, one night in the future. I will discuss the dream. It was about the signs of Imam Sahib al Asr al-Zaman. He says to him, one of the parts of the dream that I saw was I saw a piece of cloth that was hanging from the sky. A piece of cloth hanging from the sky. And what happened was that people were taking parts of the cloth and they were rejecting other parts. He said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, what does this mean? Amir al-Mu'mineen replied, this is one of the signs of the Imam coming. He said, how? He says, near the time of the Imam, the religion of Islam, the Muslims will submit to some things and they'll reject others. 
And this is the same way with Al Muhammad and the Muwajjah. That when I follow Al Muhammad, I follow them unconditionally. Not conditional on the basis of whether it agrees with my own rationale. Yes, everything Al Muhammad does will agree with reason. But it doesn't necessarily mean at this moment man has found the reason. No. If you believe every law of Allah given to Al Muhammad is based on a Lord who is wise and has reason, therefore you would submit unconditionally without thinking twice. You would automatically say that if Hussein ibn Ali tells me to do this, I'm not going to question once or twice. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allah wa rasoolah is the first verse in Surah Al-Hujurat. It is a verse which says, do not put forward your opinion in the presence of Allah and His Prophet. It was revealed about a group of people that used to come to Rasulullah. When they used to come to Rasulullah, although hadiths differ, they used to come to Rasulullah, they said, Muhammad will submit to Islam. Okay, very good, come submit. On, on a few conditions. Number one, let us still drink, we'll still have interest, and we can still.